Hey, welcome to the garage. Uh, today I'm going to be doing just a little bit of work on my FE250. This is a 2020. And uh, recently I adjusted the valves. Um, but I didn't really show what to do so much with the uh, valve chain adjuster. So this is the valve chain adjuster is right here. This little right above the muffler there and below, uh, below the radiator you'll find it there and uh, there's a certain trick that I've seen that you can do to adjust it I think if you just take it out gently and just loosen it like I did in the video then you can adjust your valves and then you just you know tighten it back in there again but I didn't take it all the way out and I didn't do um, where you compress it and you let it back out again so I thought I'd just do that today just for a video uh, doesn't really need to be done, but uh, I thought for those of you who uh, may want to see it get done, then this would be a good demonstration video. Again, this is a 250. Uh, the 350s are the same. It's double overhead cam. Um, when you get into the uh, 450s, 500s, they have a single overhead cam, so it's a different, um, different uh, head setup. This gives a lot more horsepower to a smaller engine, and uh, you'll find it on the KTM, the... Uh, Husqvarna, the gas gas, and almost every four-stroke is going to have one of these cam chain tensioners. There are different kinds. There's hydraulic ones, and then there's manual ones where you just set it yourself. I go with the stock one. This is hydraulic. That means as the chain may loosen a little bit, it hydraulically puts pressure on the mechanism inside there, and it snaps forward to keep it tight because you can't have a loose cam chain bouncing around there. It'll affect your timing of your valves. So let's get into it. Uh, real quickly, I just need a, I'm going to back this up just a little bit, so I can get my arms in there and then I'll zip. Okay, so I'm going to be using a 24 millimeter wrench here, just to get it loosened up. It's a little tricky because you're right on the muffler there. So you're going to have to go back and forth a little bit with it there. There isn't much room to work, but you can see it's already loose. And I did not pre-loosen it. I did pre-loosen the, uh, there's a little cap on here. And you can take this cap off. You might need to bend your uh, wrench just a little bit to get past the frame there. Unless you've got one of those ones that has the round ends on it, which is really nice. I used to have some of those, but I don't now. For some reason, I guess they all got broken. So I'm just going to pop this little end cap off here. Okay. Well, a couple drops of oil came out of there, but um, you can see it's got an Allen uh, head on there. I'm just going to set that aside. And now, so the trick is when you go to loosen this, uh, it hits the frame. So that's loose all the way, but you can't, yeah, okay, so it actually came out this time, all right, look at that, came out. But normally what will happen is this piece here will slide out with it and, uh, and, it, and it prevents it from doing it. So what you can do, and I didn't have to do it, it figures because I'm right on the film now, is you just push your, uh, your wrench in through there, your Allen wrench, and push this unit right here back in there. And then it'll come right off like it just did. So that was actually quite easy. Okay, so now I'm just going to reach in and I'm going to pull that out of there. You can use some uh, uh, some needle nose very gently and pull it out. There's an O-ring there. You don't want to lose that. But you can see this piece here. So I'm going to set that aside now. Okay, so what I've got here now is I've just got a mirror. <laughs> Popping that in there and so you can see inside of there. And what you're going to see right in the center there is actually the back side of the chain tensioner, which the uh, camp chain tensioner is going to set up against there. So I've got that out of there. And uh, yeah, there is not a second O-ring in there. It's just that single O-ring. Okay, here's your main parts. You've got the holder. It holds it in there. 
the little cap that goes on the end. And that has a little O-ring on it as well. So I won't lose that. And that's going to close down. And you can open that for when the piston is in here. And you want to take it out. You can push it in and pull it out. And it will come away from the frame that way. And then uh, as well, once you put it back in there. I'm going to show you how to adjust this. Um, you can push this and it will push it into the right position uh, before you put it back together. So let me let me show you how to do this. So basically this is not easy to do. It's a little bit difficult. So you're going to need a nice solid work thing to push on. I'm going to push that down. And you can see as I push it, it clicks down farther and farther. It has a little locker in there that as you push it, it goes click, click, click. But if you push it all the way down to about that level right there, which is about three millimeters, they say. It's about three millimeters, right? And But I've got a washer here that I can set it on top of that is just about exactly the same three millimeters. Uh, but it doesn't fit, so I'll have to put it next to it. So um, I should be able to push that down and it'll pop and it'll stay down. So now that's down all the way. Okay, so work on my camera here trying to get it right. Um, so to get this out to show you how to do it, you just push it down all the way and it pops out. Okay, so but you can't put it back in like that because it's going to put a lot of pressure on these aluminum threads to try to push it up against the cam tensioner. So what you can do is just basically put it on something like that so it doesn't go in all the way and pop. Yep, a little too far. There we go. So now it's locked in place. So now what I should be able to do is when I put it back together, it's not quite three. Okay, let's say go to three millimeters. So a little farther maybe. No, that's about it. That looks right. So I'm going to put slide this in with the O-ring on it. Then I'm going to put this over the top. And once it's in there, and this is tightened down, I'm going to put something like this in there, and I'm going to push it against the cam chain tightener. Let's pretend that's the cam, I'm sorry, the cam chain tensioner. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to push that. It's going to compress this, and it's going to pop back out. So it'll set its own pressure while it's in the bike. And that should be just the right pressure to hold that tensioner against the cam chain so you don't have anything loose bouncing around in there. So let's go ahead and we'll uh, put it back in. Okay, so I got my piston here. I'm gonna just gonna put my O-ring on there. You know, I'm gonna stick it right back in the hole there. And that O-ring could should kind of hold it in there so it doesn't fall out. Well, I would hope it would anyway. Yeah, there, oh, there we go. Setting in there. Now I'm gonna take my uh, cap, pressure cap. Make sure it's clean in there. I'm gonna put my uh, copper Copper washer back on there. It should just pop right over the top. Yep, there it is. And I'm going to tighten it back up in there. Come on. Goes in real easy because. That piston is already compacted in there. If it wasn't, I would have a difficult time and I might actually uh, mess those threads up. It's a real tight fit in here. You don't have to take your muffler off and you don't have to remove your, your water hose for your radiator. It, it is possible to get in there. It just takes a little bit of patience. Oh, and your 24 inch, 24 millimeter wrench there. Come on, baby. <clears throat> okay, I'm gonna just try to get that in there. Just there's probably a torque setting for that, but oh, that's good and tight. It is aluminum. You don't want to over tighten it. So here I have my little cap. You can see 
is removed. It's not in the end of that there. So now I should be able to take my wrench here and I should be able to push that in and it should see how much room there is now in there. It's going in that far. It shouldn't go in that far when it's so I'm going to push on it now and I'm going to hopefully push it in hard enough to where it snaps back out again. Oh, okay, I felt it pop that time, so let's take a look. Oh, uh, yeah, it looks like it's there. So it shouldn't be loose at all in there. Look with the mirror there. I can see it's right up against right up against the cap. So now what I can do is I'll just take my little cap there. Set back in there. A little tricky to get in there. I actually bent this a little bit so it would fit in there. Like I said, you can get the ones with the rounded ends on them. And it'll be a lot more convenient. I'm not getting a very good grip on there, so... Don't need that very tight. It has an O-ring on it. So it should be good. So let's fire it up see what happens. Okay, so now we've got it back in there. Let's just fire it up, see what happens. You heard it first, it make a little bit of rattle sound, but it is hydraulic and it should push it back into place so it's pretty tight. Okay, so there you have it. Um, basically, what how you uh, remove and you put back in your cam chain tensioner on a regular traditional stock one, which is hydraulic. You can get uh, manually done ones. I haven't seen no use for that so far, but maybe in heavy competition, they're more reliable. I don't know. I've never seen one fail before, but uh, write in the comments maybe if you have. And uh, yeah, so... That's just a little follow-up because I didn't show that when I did the valve uh, adjustment and uh, changed the shims and stuff in the, in the last video that I did about that. You can see that video as well. Well, have a great day, and don't be afraid to play with these things. 